<laughs> Look at my, my special mug. Where did you get Waldo? This is not Waldo. This is Harry Potter. Oh my God, it looks just like Waldo. Brandon Boyd. Where's um, Harry? <laughs> so I have to introduce myself to everybody. My name is Nicole Alvarez, and I'm here for Radio.com, and this is, this is Brandon Boyd of Incubus, who doesn't need an introduction. Sure I do. Hi, everybody. I'm Brandon from Incubus. Hi. B, um, so we're doing a pandemic, and basically it's a Q&A, so I have, I'm not in control, which... Mm, however, I'm going to ask you a bunch of fan questions. I have 10 exactly. But before we get into that, so many of us were talking before you got on here. Trust Ball B-Side is a masterpiece. And you and I are friends, so you can put that humility bullshit aside. It is beautiful. Holy shit. Thank you. Let's Thank start you so with, much. I appreciate that. Let's start with Karma Come Back. Do you think it's kind of, I don't know, the, do you believe in karma? Yeah, I do. Not in the kind of um, the sort of uh, pop spirituality way, though. I think that there's something to be said for um, the energy you send out is the energy you get back. Like, as above, so below. As the call, so the echo. It's like karma is like a, it's a mirror, essentially, of what you put into the world, you get back at that's how I see karma. So right. sometimes, though, it does feel like there are uh, karmic implications in the things that we do. Correct. And, and um, that's kind of what I was pointing at with this, with the lyric in this track. Um, sometimes it's funny. Sometimes when we write songs, actually, almost always when we write songs, I am reacting viscerally to uh, the sounds that Mikey and the guys are making. And I sometimes would just sort of like sit down and close my eyes and uh, my head gets sort of filled with imageries and color. And uh, I, in a way, like interpret it. And so when they started messing around with that riff, that was the, the, the verses in the song, uh, I kept seeing like this like flickering light and uh, a shadow kind of dancing in, in the flickering light. Oh, and so I started sort of interpreting that and I started interpreting the the, the dancing shadowy figure as karma. She was like playing in the dying light of uh, a sort of, of, in the light of a dying paradigm, so to speak. It's, it, it's very heady. I, it's, I, very it's hard heady. to explain what I see sometimes, but I do my best. I do my best to explain myself in the song. So, anyway. So, Trust Ball, so this particular EP is a, is a perfect bite, I think. Um, I feel very satisfied by the end of it. So much so that I wonder, how did you know where to, well, where did you start it and how did you know where it would end? Because to me, it seems like it's a perfect natural progression. And each song has its own personality, but you can tell they're siblings. I don't know. I really do think that you struck perfection on this one. Oh, thank you so much. They're so You're welcome. sweet. Um, yeah. we, went, we really essentially started writing the record in 2014, I think. 2014? Uh, well, when we did Trust Fall Side A. Yeah. And so both Into the Summer and Our Love, uh, the, a lot of the music and some of the, the lyric and stuff as well to those songs were written in 2014. And we didn't necessarily, it wasn't that we liked other ideas better. There were just other ideas uh, kind of, like we started working on Our Love and then another idea would come in and it would just sort of push it off to the side and then we literally forget about some song ideas sometimes and i go through every couple of years and just start digging through things that we did crappy little demos of and i'm like how did we forget about this this is awesome and then i'll kind of resend it around to the guys and everyone they're like what's this i'm like it's you <laughs> from three years ago from four years ago let's finish this song and so that's how trust ball site b started to kind of come to fruition. I, you know, it was like us reminding each other, like, oh yeah, we have this unfinished thought. Let's kind of see what we can do with this track. And then uh, that song, On Without Me, came up, then Karma Come Back came up, and it, we just sort of, we, we basically completed the thought. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the fan questions because there's, so there's so many things I wanna ask you, but the fans have done a really good job of, of, of giving me some some questions that I think will satisfy everything. 
I want you to know, just for the record, nine out of 10 people asked about On Without Me. So we're going to leave that one for last. Okay. All right. So this is from at Madison 99. She wants to know how much of what your life is centers around touring. Well, a moment. <laughs> Hero. Hero. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because so, so, under normal circumstances, uh, heavy quotes in normal circumstances. Um, what is normal, Brandon? Like, what yeah. is normal anyways? Up is Thursday, down is purple. It's all kind of Fuck it. Fuck up it. in the end. Um, normally, I would be, I'm in sort of a, a, a continual state of either coming off tour or getting ready to go on tour. And in a lot of ways, that's affected uh, the way that I go about things in my life, you know, up until about six weeks ago, I, I wasn't a very good cook. And let me tell you, right now, I'm kind of killing it in the kitchen. <laughs> really? Interesting. You know what we can do next is we can do a segment like Cooking with Brandon Boyd, but, you know, yeah. that's, for another, that's for, like, another, maybe next month when we're still in quarantine. Let's do um, it. Okay. This is from Stellar Stuff 9. Which song on the new EP took the most and the least time to perfect? It's a good question. Um, I have the, the song that immediately comes to mind is Our Love, because... Um, that was another example of um, music and a lyric and a melody that was created um, around the time of Trust Fall Side A. And I did a demo of my, my vocal for that track up here at my house. And um, I found it in some files and I sent it back to Mikey and I was like, why haven't we finished it? There was no drums and there was no bass and there was no bridge, but the verses and the choruses were there as they exist now and uh so it took the longest and it took the longest for it to kind of come to fruition but we actually used the demo vocal as the final vocal uh so i did at least work <laughs> i just dusted it off and showed everybody was like this is great <laughs> let's you, do this you, know? you work with a talented your, your brothers are talented mofos and each of them have their own little niche and their own specialty and it's incredible. We'll we'll um we'll shower them with love after this. So this is from this is from Cab Thirty Two. Uh, we're gonna get deep. True thoughts on what's going on in the world right now and what direction it's going. You and I have talked about this a little bit. How it's you know it's a hard question to answer because every day is different. But yeah. but today, how do you feel about the world? Today, I'm just gonna plug in my phone really quick, sorry. Okay. Um, today, I'm feeling relatively optimistic about the world. And um, Nicole, you're upside down. Now. No, you're upside down. I have I'm upside down. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yoga with Brandon uh, Boyd. <laughs> yeah. No, All right. you're upside down. So, Wait, you're yeah. upside down. Your mom. <laughs> your mom um i think that this is a, a this is definitely the strangest experience that i've ever that's ever been in my life i think that's probably goes without saying for almost anybody in the world right now none of us have ever had to uh shelter in place before none of us have ever um been out of the job uh to this degree this is you know this is rivaling like the great depression and um, social distancing, like all of these words, didn't, all these terms didn't exist um, six, seven weeks ago. And it's, uh, it's remarkable. Uh, I've, I'm basically, uh, I I've always had a, an ethos in my life to, to try and learn how to exist in a relative uncertainty and find um, not comfort, but an ability to operate. Self-sustained. Yeah, to sustain under uncertainty, because really the truth is, and this is where we can get deep if you want to, the truth is life is uncertain and life is ephemeral. And so if we can learn how to play and to thrive in uncertainty, I think that there is a really valuable um, takeaway from this. Among other things we could take away, one of them is the opportunity to be uncertain and not be terrified. Um, somebody asked me today how I was doing, and I was like, the simple answer is some days are burdens and some days are opportunities. It just depends. But 
um, I think people hold you to a different standard because you're a rock star and all that. But do you have bad days? Do you have Absolutely. days? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, I have, I have bad days for, for my own selfish reasons. You know, I'm definitely nervous about uh, what I do for a living. You know, I, what I do for a living, I do what I love for a living, so I'm blessed in that respect. But um, there is a this sort of vague thought in my mind that I'm having a bad day that uh, will we ever be able to, like, get people in a big giant place together and squish together and sing songs? Because those are, like, you know, concerts are not the best place right now for people They're to be not. going. And, it's, and that, gonna... that definitely scares me, yeah. They're not, the thought of a concert is probably the scariest thing to like the, the world health order right now and everything. But yeah. for so many of us, it's home. For so many of us, it's the place where you go and you sing all these lyrics that don't belong to you, but they belong to you. But they and do. Like this mass confession and it's this like release. That's why whenever anybody leaves a show, you feel electric. Yeah. So it, it's scared that we might not have that. Um, Let's not think like that, because I will see you again in a venue sooner rather than later. And I'll um, just say, before we jump into the next thing, that uh, yeah. yes, of, of course I have bad days and, I, and then I have good days. Um, but I think that one thing that we can all kind of agree on is that uh, this is a um, very much a shared experience. And nobody is alone in their uncertainty or their, you know, their, their fear about the future. But... Um, the wonderful thing, another wonderful thing about human beings is that we are incredibly adaptive and we have an amazing capacity to uh, be uh, ingenious in times of uh, peril sometimes. Yeah. But amazing things can come of situations like this. So that's what we need to concentrate and, and, on. And are. Amazing things are happening. I feel more connected. Like, I don't think I've talked to you as much as I've talked to you in the last month, um, whatever, via technology, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this one is from Mary Acosta 87. How easy or hard is it for you guys to create the kind of music you want without the pressure of what is expected? How do you keep your eyes forward? Mm. Mm. I like these questions, just for the record. These are all really cool. These are great. Um, I handpicked them so I had some control. <laughs> you know? I, you know in this band, I think one of the reasons, there's lots of reasons why we're still a band and why we still make music together. Um, we also make music individually, but we make, I think, the best that we do is we do together. Um, but each of us has a kind of um, uh, uh, an inner drive towards art. And I truly believe that that is the reason why we are doing it. It's the reason that we started was just we there's like a, a thing, there's like this drive in, in each of us that we need to make things. And it, on a bad day, it kind of drives you nuts because it's the melody you can't get out of your head and you're driving your partner crazy or you, know, you can't stop singing this one melody. But then on a good day, there's guys in the room with you who are like, I like that melody, sing it and again. And take it to another level. And then let's, oh, I let play that guitar riff to it. And then how about this beat? And then that's how we get songs. So I suppose, um, I don't even remember the original question. Sorry, but I'm basically. Either, but I like where it's going. So <laughs> it's, it, it's something, it's something inert. It's something that we almost need to do, you know? Yeah. You know, what's interesting about you guys is you're all so very different, but you make sense. You're like a human casserole or something. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Okay, so this is a simple one from Maggie. I couldn't catch the end of it because her um, her text got cut off. But do you still play the didgeridoo? <laughs> <laughs> no, I ha I haven't wrapped my lips around that thing in quite some time. But I'm going to now. Now that she reminded me, I'm gonna go and honk that thing. Can you imagine if somebody just joined this conversation and all they heard was you go, "I haven't wrapped my my lips around that thing in a while." They're that gonna stay. Having a good time. Okay, this is from M. Wilson 76. I love this question. How have your views of the world changed since starting the band and what has stayed the same? Ooh. Ooh I know these people, they're getting deep. They don't want to know about like production or where'd you, where'd you record? They're getting like in there. 
how have my views of the world changed and how have my views of the world stayed the same? I suppose that my outlook on the world um, has become a, a quite a bit more holistic. I think that there, um, there's something about traveling around for a couple of decades with your good friends and seeing parts of the world that you never dreamed that you'd be able to see and, you know, um, being exposed to um, so much discomfort on a certain level that you kind of surrender to the comfort and the uncertainty. And then all of a sudden you are, uh, you're filled up. You, uh, you, you travel so much that you think like, there's no way that I could survive another day. And then all of a sudden something happens and you get completely uh, filled up with, with love and inspiration and you just want to keep going. So uh, that's like life in general, by the way. Pose, yeah. 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 And so for that, I feel incredibly grateful that we've had the opportunity to see so much of the world in, um, in a relatively short period of time. You know, it's been a couple of decades that we've been traveling around and making music with everyone, but um, that has definitely changed my view of the world. What has stayed the same? Uh, I suppose for me, what has stayed the same is a kind of, uh, I still feel like a kid in a lot of ways. Uh, I still feel like a kid who's trying to dig his way to the bottom of the sandbox, and there doesn't seem to be a bottom of the sandbox. It's like a rabbit hole that keeps going. Is so, it because you have a childlike curiosity? Is that what it is? I honestly think that's. I think that's it. I, I am. Uh, I am. That's why we're friends. I think that's why we get along. I'm infinitely curious. I'm like dangerously curious. I'm. Uh, I'll touch the electrified fence more times than you probably should. <laughs> but that's where all the fun is. It's true. Yeah. We're all friends. Okay, this is from Camille Freeman, who I know is is on the stream. Um, oh, Brazil. All of Brazil. Um, <laughs> Obrigado, Brazil. This is a funny question from Camille Freeman because I think I know the answer to this, but just the fact that she thinks this is hilarious. Do you live in your yurt? I do not live in the yurt. I spend a lot of time in the yurt, but uh, I have a house that is next to the yurt. So Should I, we tell people what a yurt is? Like, you want to explain what a yeah. yurt is for people yeah. to understand? Uh, a yurt is basically a really fancy tent. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a Mongolian uh, tent that have been, they've become kind of like popular um, in more- Glamping. Recent. Yeah, it's very glampy. It's very basically, glampy. Like, it's like a permanent tent. There's a structure to it, um, but mine has like air conditioning and heat. Yeah, and, it's glamping, B. Yeah. It's, it's glamping. Yeah. It's glamping. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is from Jay to the Moon, who, by the way, sent me 507 questions. Uh, so I picked this one. Will there be a Morning View 20th anniversary tour? You don't have to answer that because the element of surprise is, you know, we, we can probably, um, maybe would be good, but it's up to you. I. I'm not going to give you a definitive answer, but I will say that um, doing the 20 years of Make Yourself tour was um, way too much fun to call it a day there. Why? Is it because you're reliving the memories? Is it because of what you see emoting from the audience? Because not only are you reliving these memories, I thought about it when I went to see you guys at the Greek. I was on stage next to you, so I had this unique vantage point where I got to see the audience. And they yeah. weren't just there singing songs that they knew. You were taking them back somewhere, and I saw them mm -hmm. on their face go back to that song in junior high or high school or whatever, and I saw them mm -hmm. revisit parts of themselves and emote it back to you. So that was mm -hmm. probably one of the cooler experiences of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, so even what you're saying right there is a perfect example. There was like a, there was a mirroring effect that happened um, on that tour that was completely um, unanticipated from us. Like we, we, we thought like, oh, this is, it'll be fun. It'll be really fun for us to go and play these songs from this record from 20 years ago. But from the very first show and all the way through the entire tour, every single night was like this, just, it was like a radical mirror. Everyone was mirroring their nostalgia and their, the way that those songs 
affected them at that period of time. And then we also got to kind of bring those songs into into the now, which was really fun as well. Mm. See them kind of be able to reinterpret them and uh, own them right now, as opposed to doing like renditions of them from 20 years ago. As the person who wrote those songs, is it possible for a song to change meanings to you? Like you wrote it about this one particular subject matter, right? But then mm -hmm. 20 years later, could it mean something totally different to you? Yeah, absolutely. And that's part of that mirroring that I'm talking about. It's like you, you know, you write a song for your heart out, a couple of decades go by and, and in this very strange, unique, blessed occasion, like tons and tons of people have also lived those songs and committed them to memory and then they sing them back to you enough times they start to take on a different energy they start to become uh less yours and more kind of ours and that's a that's kind of a remarkable thing it's powerful kind of yeah it really yeah. is to say that it's changed my life is a massive understatement <laughs> and considering you've been doing this your pretty much your entire life since you were a teenager it's fascinating okay i have to i've got Two more. Um, I, didn't, I, I didn't write this, but it's awesome. Out of all the dead people, out of all the dead people. A lot of them. <laughs> I think you, out of all the, all the dead artists or the artists that are no longer with us, who would you most want to work with? And that's at underscore D Sauk. Wow, we. Wow, we. Because yeah, you, could, you could go, you could go. I don't know. I could pick one for you who I'd want you to work with. I mean, with. I have quite a few in my mind, but I'm actually curious to. And, I and would, okay. I'm, me, and then I also want to know from you, like, who you, uh, any, any artist that is with us, who would you want to go see the most? But go ahead. That's easy. I'm going to answer that one first. I'd want to go see the Rat Pack in Vegas. Oh, wow. I'd want to go see Frank Sinatra and, and his boys in Vegas, and I'd want to be dressed up and drinking whiskey. And for you, I'd want you to collaborate with either Bob Marley or Jeff Buckley. That's amazing. And yeah. so uh, Buckley is always on the tip of my tongue because, you know, he's somebody that he passed. It wasn't a terribly long time ago. Um, and if I had a time machine, he's definitely one of the shows that I would want to go see. Um, I was listening to him while he was still alive, but then he, he died so suddenly, you know, and it was such a tragic thing, not only because of just the, you know, the fact that we lost somebody so young, but so many of us didn't get to actually see him do his thing live. He never really made it past like theaters. So, um, but as far as collaborating with somebody, um, I definitely wouldn't be mad if um, I got to sing while Jimi Hendrix played guitar. I mean, yeah, okay. Fun. Yeah, yeah. I don't think your band <laughs> would be mad at that. You can't, <laughs> no better answer. We're done. We're moving on because there's no better answer than that. Um, the last question is, this is very interesting because I don't think we've ever talked about this. What's the process for figuring out visuals? And that's from Elizabeth Sarah Bartlett. For figuring out visuals. So like the whole look of the tour and what's going on mm. behind each song. Who's responsible mm. for that? Well, we tend to kind of brainstorm as a band uh, for a kind of general aesthetic. Um, we usually come to ideas pretty quickly, and that's actually a blessing because those things can obviously go very different. You know, some people could say like, I want a rainbow, and somebody else, I want monochromatic uh, orchids or something like that. And we don't really ever argue over stuff like this. So. We get a general aesthetic that we want to uh, have, and then we work with um, very talented um, lighting directors and stuff. And our our lighting director for the past handful of years, Graham uh, and his wife, Jess, um, they put together these incredible psychedelic wonderlands that we get to curate and play with, and it's a lot of fun. Out of all of you guys, which is the one of you that would say, I want a rainbow, like which is the most, which is the one that has the most childlike wonder out of all of you? The childlike wonder, I don't know, but the one most likely to want a rainbow and then on another day want something completely monochromatic is sitting right here with us. Do you guys want to meet him? Is it, is it, is it Bruce? He's right here. Let me see. Hi. <laughs> I think you're going to your dog. Um, yeah, that makes absolute sense. Um, 
we're done with the questions. I had 10 questions, but I want to talk about, so last night you had sent me the EP and I, I skimmed over it because I like to hear the, 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 the albums when they come out with everybody else. There's yeah. a collective energy in the air, but I had skimmed through it and I, I knew most of them. Last night I was, I got it at 9 p.m. our time. I was up till three in the morning bawling my face off <laughs> listening, to, <laughs> listening to no it's not funny like my <laughs> I was I was like I almost had to take a Xanax I was so I was oh like God. can anybody else hear this I was texting with my friend Shireen on without me has I love it like oil and water and and that's a bold statement considering how much I love that song but I don't want you to tell me what it's about but talk to me about that song because it's mm -hmm. special Mm, thank you so much, Nicole. I, I, first of all, I, I appreciate um, the way that you listen to our music so much. And I, I appreciate you for supporting us over all these years. And um, uh, I'd be lying if I said that your approval didn't matter to me. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> it's going to get to my head, B. Watch right. out. <laughs> um, yeah, there was that that song we worked on it for a while we worked on it a lot while we were actually on tour this past fall on the make yourself uh reunion tour make yourself thing and um every day at sound check we were chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and we never really constructed a whole song that way so i had like the entire fall to hone the melody and and hone the the lyric to it and adjust little parts here and there. We'd come in at it almost every single day as a band. And so when we were actually recorded it, we recorded uh, the guitars and the drums. And I think the bass actually while we were on tour, um, we just did like whole takes of them at like sound checks. And um, it captured something about the, the energy that was a lot of fun. And I couldn't wait to do the the vocal for it because I was really excited about it and the guys were excited about it too, which isn't always the case. Like sometimes the guys uh, are very tight lipped about their approval about what I'm doing. I'm really? So Why? Out. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Are you know. afraid to <laughs> angry? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. They, they'd be like, yeah, cool. It's cool. I dig it. Cool. But uh, I'm looking for more like, yeah, that's sick, bro. Like something a little bit more um, yeah. telling. With, with feeling, I'm, guys. With feeling. I'm looking for feedback, you know. Um, so, but they they were giving me more positive feedback on that one. And then, like our um, our mom, uh, every couple of give me like like eyebrows about it, you know. And I was like, okay, maybe this is good. So excited to sing it. Came home from tour. I was gonna get in the studio, sing it, and I actually before I did that, I decided to go and have my my septum repaired. <laughs> Yeah, I had, I, I learned to sing and I've been singing the entire time in our career on one nostril. And because my, I was a little bit, sort of gotten some fights as a kid. You got it, you, you got to play on fights when you were a child. I somehow I can't, I can't see that two, happening. Two broken noses. One of them was an accident from uh, our old bass player, Dirk Lance. He broke my nose with the headstock of his bass once on stage at the Whiskey A Go Go. But he broke it Fun here. My bridge split, but the first time was uh, a, a whole other story. And my nose was like bent out of shape pretty much. So anyway, this whole time I've been singing on one nostril. So I was really curious about singing this one song being able to <laughs> read it for the first time. So I waited, I waited, I went and got the surgery. They, they like fixed my, not my broken septum. And all of a sudden I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm going to sing this song now. And so I, I, I did the track and it, it, I don't think that the, you know, the casual listener could tell the difference, but I could tell it was a lot of fun. Did I you felt like I had more. the cotton balls in your nose for two days? It was like a month. It, it was, was like a month. Jeez. Yeah. Well, they had to like re-break my nose from the inside. It was kind of gnarly. It came out great, by the way. They did a fantastic job. It's still um, crooked, but it, now I can breathe. It doesn't was, look crooked. <laughs> um, I have two more, one more question and then I want to, I'm going to let you go, but I want to say something. My question is, my question, is there any song of yours that 
sometimes it's too emotional for you to sing. And even if it's on the set list, for whatever reason, you're like, I, I can't go there tonight. Yeah, and yeah. Is it oil and water? Because you never sing that for me. Sometimes. It has been before. I, I've, I've pushed through it a couple of times. But, the, you know, it, it's rarely like I can't sing that song tonight because dot, dot, dot. It's more like um, we start playing it and I'll just kind of swallow. I'll just choke it back. You know what I mean? I, it, I think I'm pretty good at being a professional. <laughs> Like, you are You're pretty good hiding hiding that yeah. stuff it's not hiding it but you know nobody wants to see a grown man just sort of burst into tears for no reason um but music <laughs> music affects me really intensely and i know you know, that, I know. Yeah. yeah probably most people that are listening to this right now they understand that music is an incredibly powerful force to use your term it has the, the potential to change the molecules in the room so yep. um but that's that's a blessing. So sometimes if I have to squeeze out a couple of tears, that's all right. I'll that's do it. Cool. I promise to put that more for you. I'm going to wrap it up by saying I told you this once in an interview that a lot of times I see people post pictures of themselves in their most happiest moments, like if they climb Kilimanjaro or if they're just hugging a bunch of friends. And usually the caption under the picture is, and in this moment, I am happy. So many people... So many people, I can't tell you how many times I've traveled and been at the point of tears because I'm feeling the ultimate happiness. And in my head, I sing. And in this moment, I'm happy. And that's because mm. that's because of you. And I think mm. we're going through this pandemic. Everybody's feeling all kinds of fucking nuts. And yeah. for the time that we've been on for 30 minutes, I think in this moment, we are all very happy. I'm going to mm. cry. So I just want to say thank you. You're the greatest group of guys. Your management, your crew, your fans. Everybody that's associated with Incubus is nothing, nothing short of a class act. And I am so proud to be a fan and a friend. So thank you. Thank Nicole. you. Um, I adore you so very much. And maybe we can catch up sometime soon. Let's do. Call me anytime. Okay. Wait, where's your dog with the diaper? Where is that guy? He's in the kitchen. Do you, do you want to uh, yes. have a look? Yeah, First yeah, yeah. First of all, yeah. There's, this one is sleeping at my feet right now. Hi, baby. Hi. That's good, man. Oh. oh my god yeah. uh, okay here, i'll introduce you to the diaper boy and i'm really hoping that there's no poo involved because that's the thing with diaper boy so so i have to so when you change your dog's diaper do you have like a diaper genie like what 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 goes like do you change it like a baby kind of he wears pull-ups he wears and they actually they work brilliantly but this is bruce everybody he's sleeping hi bruce oh baby Oh, Bruce. Okay, show us the diaper. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Bubba. What's up? Who that? Who that? I, I met you at the Greek, and then there's Bruce's pull up. Hold on. <laughs> come look, come look. <laughs> oh, B, you they work, you are, they work really well. <laughs> you are blessed. Before I let you go, I'm going to toast to you. Here, give me. My, my roommate slash best friend is here. Say hi, Brooke. Come in. Hold on, get in. Say hi, Brooke. Hi. And we have, um, cheers. This is to trust fall side B. And to yes. you. Hold on a second. Cheers, Nicole. <laughs> I love you, Brandon Boyd, so much. And we'll talk soon. Okay. Um, I'm Nicole Alvarez for Radio.com. Thank you guys for showing up. And bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Nicole. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications from Radio.com. While you're at it, why don't you check out some of our other great videos?